Somebody shot a hole right through it. <laughs> Just popped it right, right there, boy. I mean, it nailed it. Wow. It's really busted. It's kind of like an entry and exit wound, and an exit wound is always way worse. So we're going to see if we can't fix that and stabilize that a little bit. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop with Mr. Bill Webb. This is Bill's fourth <laughs> trip up here from Texas. I love this place. Yeah, well, you like you love this place, huh? Well, there you go. In the wintertime, I might want to sell it to you. <laughs> it's pretty cold out there today. It is, it is cold. Boy, I mean, it was eight degrees this morning, and it's still only about 20, 21 right now. Yeah, that's about what it was when I left Texas. Yeah, it's. Uh, Chilly, in the, and that's in the sun shining, and it's still only 20 degrees out there, 21 degrees, something like that. Anyway, uh, and it's supposed to get colder tonight. It's supposed to be down to like 5, I think. Yeah. Well, Bill has brought me yet another thing, <laughs> and this is a Framus guitar. We've worked on a number of these. These are German-made uh, guitars and uh, pretty cool guitars in a lot of ways. I, you know, what I like about them, believe it or not, and I know a lot of people don't like this, but I like the laminated neck. Um, it's very fine, tiny laminations. Can you see that there, how th fine those laminations are? That neck will never bow, bend, twist, warp. It will never do any of that. So that's pretty cool. I mean, like from the outset, that neck is solid and it ain't going, ain't going nowhere. Um, what I don't like, I mean, I like that a lot, and then what I don't like is their peg head design. I, you know, I'm not crazy about that. I mean, it's just the way they made them. They make them all that way, but I would have preferred that to be more like the Martin or Gibson or whatever. And then, of course, on this one, it's a little different in that it's got a totally bolted-on bridge. There is no glue on this bridge. Um, they've got a metal bar under on the inside on, uh, going across this, and these screws are going into that metal bar. And then they've got a small metal bar on each of these uh, bolts. So it's totally, uh, you know, screwed on. And, you know, evidence of that is look how far you can poke that piece of paper up underneath there. You can see it's going all the way up in there, the corner, pulling that back out, see? So it's uh, definitely um, not glued at all. One, the, the reason he brought it to me is, is more or less a setup and a, maybe repair a little spot here, but um, the neck on this one, uh, you know, it's, it's got quite a gap under here, and uh, he says when you put tension on the strings, it's kind of moving. So we're going to work on that and figure that out. Now this one's made different than the last couple I've worked on. The last couple I worked on, their necks uh, on these framuses had a, a, had a hook. And you manipulate this hook and grab a hold of a bar and it pulls the neck down. And uh, this one's not that way. This one's more like an electric guitar in that it's got the four screws that hold the neck on, which I kind of like that better. I think that's an easier way to work on it, to be honest. But here's the real purpose of bringing it in here. Somebody shot a hole right through it. <laughs> well, not really, but that's kind of what it looks I like. I think the lady at the shop said somebody dropped something on it. Oh, somebody dropped something on it. it and you bought it at a pawn shop? At an uh, antique shop in Jefferson, yeah. Texas. Antique shop in Jefferson, Texas. Yeah, it looks like exactly what happens. And I can almost tell you the exact shape of it. <laughs> it looked like it was about almost a quarter inch by about three-eighths of an inch square and just popped it right right there boy I mean it nailed it and I've looked on the inside and you can see that on the inside also so we're gonna see if we can't fix that and stabilize that a little bit that that hole there is you know it's it's not gonna create any long-term problem or anything it's more just an eyesore type thing and we can fix it I think we can improve it I you know if fixing something like that's pretty hard to do <laughs> but uh, in terms of where you can't see it but I think we can improve it at least and make it stable yeah I kind of like these old Framus guitars they they got their own sound and everything and I think they call that the Texan the Texan, Texan model. what I, I what uh, different ones with that type of bridge what age is this one you have any idea oh I looked it up but I don't remember I think of uh, late 60s early 70s yeah yeah, I mean, if you're just looking at it and the patina and the style and everything, that's about what I would guess. Well, 
Ain't no time like the present. I guess we'll just get started on it. Well, we got the strings off this Framus. Anyway, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm gonna just tighten these down, um, make sure they're really good and tight because, like I said, they're, they're, not, they're not going into a nut. They're going into pieces of metal. There's a long piece of metal on the inside here, about the same length as this. There's a, you know, a shorter but long, but long flat piece of metal going on this. And I want to make sure all this stuff is tight. You don't want to uh, let this stuff get loose. That's where you start pulling up bows and humps and things in your instrument. So I'm gonna tighten all that down. I think the first thing that I'll attempt to do is to see what I can do with this hole back here. And I'm gonna turn it around here and see if I can get my right arm up in there. I don't know if I can. Yeah, I can, I can reach it. In fact, I can, I can feel it moving already and I'm wanting to push it back up there, but it it's busted in such a you know ragged way that it's not going to push back up through the hole. Unfortunately, bummer. Wow, it's really busted. It's worse than worse on the inside than than on the outside. It's kind of like an entry and exit wound. An exit wound is always way worse, and that's kind of what's on the inside here. The inside's busted kind of like this. It's broken a long ways here, and it's fragmented sideways too. I'm trying to push it back up in there, and it sorta kinda goes, but it doesn't really go. Now if I had three or four hands, I could do this. Coordinating it with just two hands is a lot more difficult. I was gonna see if I could somehow get this to tilt. Oop. Well, there you go. There's that loose piece of wood. Doggone it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and let it fall on the inside there. And I think we're going to see if we can't move that back out to the outside here and put it back in from the outside. I think that's the best way to do it. I'm going to save these extra two pieces of wood and see if I can't find a way to fit them back in here. I'll use this little container here to hold those. Trying to find a way to let all that wood go back up in there, but it doesn't seem to want to. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rubber glove on, and I'm going to have to use CA glue and push this up in there and let it dry. Hope it doesn't glue my finger in there. It's about all I got. I don't have too many choices, I don't think. So we've got our Starbond CA glue that one of my wonderful viewers sent me. And I got my 2XL nitro glove here. If I can get it on. This is always just not fun to me to do this because I know I'm going to stick the glove to the inside of the guitar. There's not many, many options on this. I'm going to see if we can hold that there till that sets up. I've got my little spray here, but I hate to spray this because of the what it can do to the finish. I I don't know. Maybe I can do something here. I should have done this ahead of time, but make a hole right there in the middle of that and spray it. see if that works. At least I've got the fibers up in there and I did it without gluing my glove too much. I think they're all up in there. It feels like it is. Yeah, I think it's up in there. I really try to keep the uh, neck of these things clean because it doesn't take long before you can't get the lid back on them. I think we've got it the structure of it back together. Now we want to try to get the cosmetics of it back together. And I don't know how much of that we can do, but we'll give it our best shot. After I uh, got my hand out of there, I turned the guitar over and dumped out all the little wood particles that were on the inside. And then I picked out everything that had finish on it that was any appreciable size. So I've got a few pieces in here. 
Actually, one of these doesn't have any finish on it, but it's a large piece, so I thought maybe I'd be able to get that to glue back up in the inside if I need to. I don't know. So I'll save that one separately here. And actually, these two pieces are the same way. I mean, it was pretty fragmented on the inside. But these other pieces here, I do have some finish on them. And I'm going to see what we can do about, you know, get down with the fine glasses and the magnifier and see if we can't piece it back together where it'll look halfway decent. It wouldn't push back up through the hole because it just, you know, was fragmented and it just didn't want to go. But maybe, just maybe, we'll get lucky and get it back where it's supposed to go. Okay, here's the fragment of wood that's the biggest piece with finish on it. Here's a, another little piece here, but it don't have no finish on it. Not exactly uh, ideal conditions here for this. I don't know. I don't think that's going to go very well. I first thought it went one way, but now I think it goes the other way. It's so busted, it's nearly impossible to tell how it goes. I'm not even sure it's gonna allow me to do anything with it. I'm 99% sure it goes the way I'm trying to put it in here, but it just doesn't want to go. I think what I'm going to have to do is actually cut off most of this white wood because it's not sliding in under and doesn't look like it wants to slide in under the other parts. I don't know if I can do that with this or not. Ever since the days of old Man has searched for wealth untold They dig for silver, pan for gold And leave the empty hole It's not cooperating real well here, I gotta be honest. We can only do what we can do with this, but this piece here fits in there something like that. I don't think it fits the other way. I thought first it went this way, but it doesn't. But the seam doesn't line up this way. Like there's a seam right down through the middle of it. It only lines up this way. It's just a lot of wood missing. I did save a few more splinters in that dish. Yep, that line, that, this grain line here goes with that grain line. I can tell that. That's as good as it's gonna get right there. And that ain't very good, but sometimes you can do miracles and other times you just have to work with what you got. Way down south in the Everglades where the black waters roll and the salt grass sways. The eagles fly and the otters play in the land of the Seminole. So blow, blow, Seminole wind blow like you're never gonna blow again. Calling to you like a long lost friend, but I know who you are. And blow, blow from the Okeechobee, all the way up to Mekinope. Across the home of the Seminole, the alligator and the gar. You know, you can only do what you can do on these things. And so, I'm going to try to fill around this, clean it back off, and most of it will be the right color, and then whatever's there that's not the right color, we'll just try to dye it as close as we can. And I think that's about all you got here on this particular thing. Yeah, Bill followed my advice just so you know. You know, you've heard me say several times on video to please fight the urge to glue random pieces of wood up inside your guitar. And so he fought that urge and brought it here, he said. As bad as that looks right now, I have a feeling we're going to make this look halfway decent. 
what's that you always say? It, it's gonna look worse before yeah, it looks better. Yeah, it always looks worse before it looks better. That's just the way it works with this kind of stuff. It's always the ugly duckling phase. Wow. And we're gonna let that set up and get hard, you know. <laughs> at least it's not a big hole through there, you know. Uh, and it's pretty solid. I don't think you're gonna poke your finger through there. Yeah. After what you did with chocolate, I figured that'd probably be walking apart. Yeah, it's really not that difficult on one hand, and then on the other hand, it's like, uh, yeah, it's kind of impossible to fix this with where it'll not be seen. But I think we can still improve it a lot. So I'm gonna let that sit and do its thing while we start on some more of this. I think I mentioned that the last couple of framuses I worked on had a hook mechanism that held the neck on. Well, this one has the four screws. So I thought we'd take it apart and just see what we're dealing with before we try to come up with any plan to fix it. Okay, it does have some shims yeah, in there. Exactly. Did, did you put those in? Yeah, or? I put those in. But oh, I, you did? Well, at least you didn't glue them. See, no, you no, gluing no. random pieces of no. wood would be a bad idea. Nope. Actually, those shims are not a bad idea. I, I just want to see what it looks like without anything in there. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over one more time here and look at it a little closer. What I think is kind of crude is how rough this block is. Look how rough this block is. I don't know if you all can see that, but look, it's really very crude, actually. Let me zoom you in here. But this is just like super rough sawed in grain. <laughs> I mean, it's like really bad. It's like you took it through a, a sawmill, uh, the circular saw on a sawmill, looks like they cut that and then they just stuck it in the guitar <laughs> without smoothing it at all. In fact, I think the sawmill would have made it smoother. This is really rough. Not that that really matters. I mean, it doesn't really matter in one way. And then in the other way, you think, this is a guitar. <laughs> you see everything. That's all I can tell you. You see everything. I'm looking at this. I, I see a, a crack right here at the top. Yep, it is loose. See that? See that? How that's lifting up? Mm -hmm. I didn't notice it. Yeah, that's, and then it's it's broken right here too. This top is not glued to that block in a couple places. Now the reason that's important is because that's what gives you your strength on pulling up here. You know this okay. this glued to this. You know, all of this the side and this top glued to this block is what makes this neck strong. And if that's not glued, then it's definitely not strong. Now, I don't know about this side. I guess I'll just take those out of there for now. Yeah, that's loose too, I think. Well, I think it is. Yep, it definitely is. And that's not good, so we need to fix that first. That's the first thing we gotta fix. And I'm just looking down in the inside of the guitar now, down in here, to see if the bottom, if the back is glued to that block. In the back, just from the looks of it, it looks like it's solid to the to the block, which is a good thing. I think what we got to do first is um, clean this out and um, wedge it up a little bit and get some glue in there. Yeah, because there'd be no point in trying to get the neck angle right until this is solid, because this it'll all move on you until this is solid. And I don't know how far I can get under there. I know it's loose. There, it goes real loose there. I think this screw is probably holding it down right here. Ordinarily, that would be good, but since I want it to come loose at this point, I think I need to remove that screw. I have a feeling that screw is holding the top to the block, but maybe not, it's a pretty short screw. It's pretty loose all the way, as you can see. I've got that blade under there almost the whole length of the blade. This flat edge of the blade will scrape a lot of crud out of there. It's definitely totally loose. What we'll do is slide this in here to hold it up, give myself a little bit of working room. Maybe you can see there how opened up that is now. With that in there, it's pretty open. In fact, I can see down in there a full inch, I'm sure. 
Okay, well I think I'm ready to proceed. And no, we won't be gluing any random pieces of wood up in here. We will just be... But you can do that. But this Yeah, but we... <laughs> yeah, I have permission to do you that. Have permission. <laughs> but I'm going to uh, just... Whoops, there you go. Just pour glue everywhere, make the biggest mess possible. That helps in doing this. Uh, at least it's water soluble. Yeah, it never seems to fail. There's always got to be something. So I'm going to uh, take the exacto uh, knife and slide it in there and get that glue down, work that glue down in there. I think that's going to be fine, actually. Now I just moved this wedge to a different spot to get the glue in that spot now. I think that'll be fine. It that glue holds really well and I'm pretty sure I poked a lot back in there. I think there'll be quite a bit squeezing out. Okay, I've got most of that cleaned up. Just got a damp shop towel here and just soaking up what little bit of glue got slopped down in here. Actually, it wouldn't hurt to just fill this whole thing with glue and smooth it off. It's just, it's a mess. I can't believe they left that that rough. Just really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I can see pretty good if you ever see it. Yeah. Now only a few million people saw it. <laughs> Didn't have much of that in camera, sorry about that. But anyway, I just got the clamp situated there and it was fighting me every step of the way. This is not, this wall here is not glued back to that yet. I can see that. So we're gonna fix that too. We might fix that one differently. There's a quite a bit of squeeze out coming out of this, uh, so uh, got to clean that back up again. The predicament is this here is still loose, and I don't know if you can see that on camera very well, but it is definitely still loose. I'm pushing on it there with my thumb, and it's wiggling through here, about oh, probably an inch long there. And I'm pretty sure it's more than just the binding. I'm pretty sure it goes down into the side here and everything. I can kind of see that moving with my eye. So what I think I'm going to do is more or less the same kind of thing. The difference is we got to come up with a creative way to clamp this. I'm going to see if this will go down in there. I kind of think it will. I know it'll go so far. Yeah, it's going past the binding, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's definitely going further than the binding. So what I'm going to do is hold this open like so, wiggle it back and forth, and squirt glue down in there. This will glue the binding and the wood. Again, make just as big a mess as you can. That's, that helps uh, the strength of this. That's your story and you're sticking to it, right? Yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, wiggling that back and forth, that pumps that glue down in there. I can see the glue going down in there, and it's going down in on this front edge here all the way. The, the trick of this is not breaking your binding and your side and all of that. You, you can only use so much force on this. Okay, that's about as much as we can do to that, I think. Now we'll try to clean that up, and then we have to do some real creative clamping on this. The way we're going to do that, I think, we're going to put these blocks in here and then squeeze it shut with that wedge right there. And that that's already squeezed the glue out of there, and uh, I believe that'll hold it. We'll probably let this set overnight because, uh, you know, I want that to be really solid before we put the neck back on the guitar. This side here looks like it needs similar treatment. It's not quite as loose on the front, but it is loose there too, a little bit, but that may only be the binding. I'm not really sure. Bill was pointing out that it looks like it might still be loose back here, and, and I think he's right. It is loose back there, but I don't know how I'm going to get that clamped. I don't have a deep-throated, long-reach clamp like that, so let me look around and see what I can come up with. This probably won't be the best camera shot we've ever done here, but Bill's gonna give me a hand here and put that piece of leather on the back on the top here. That's squeezing it out again. I don't know if you can see it, but it is definitely squeezing the glue out there. 
That may be the first time I've ever used that clamp on the body of a guitar. I've had that clamp since I started building and repairing instruments. So it's been with me since day one actually. And it finally came in handy on a guitar. I've used it for holding necks of instruments is what I've held it in it in the past. That's why that hole's cut out in it. But that really worked well. That holds that good and tight. Now I'm going to see what I can do about working on this side. It's getting kind of awkward with all these clamps, but I think we can still maybe get it fixed up and that way we can let the whole thing set overnight. Well, it's a clamp monstrosity, but uh, we've got it uh, in pretty good shape. This front edge on this one doesn't seem like it needs much. Um, wouldn't hurt if there was a little something there, but it's not like it's any big deal, I don't think. This other side was much looser. I think we're in pretty darn good shape for the shape we're in, but we are going to have to let this sit and uh, get hard, so I think we'll have to wait overnight on this before we go any further with the neck. But I'm sure glad we found that because that's really what the whole issue is about, I think. That neck couldn't be sturdy as long as all that is loose. It's the next morning with this Framus guitar. We took the clamps off of it here and all this is good and solid now where the uh, the uh, top is glued to the uh, neck block really well now and the sides and all that. So we're in good shape there. We've started touching up the color on this uh, hole here. On camera there you can you can see the hole it up close you can see it really good. We started touching that up and sanding it off and making some color that's going to match that. We think if we put a few more applications on there it'll probably get darker. You know you're never going to get rid of something like that entirely but it looks better than a hole already so we'll just go from there. We put the neck on here and put two strings on here and it, the action um, was at a hundred and uh, ten thousandths. So I have a shim that I'm making and this is thirty-four thousandths thick right at the moment. I'm just guessing that that'll be pretty close to what we want and it's just a guess. I have no way of really knowing for sure but we're gonna stick that in there and then we're going to screw this neck back on and see where that left us. The first trick is will the shim stay there while I glue get these screws back in this neck. Yeah, I want to do all four of them at once, but that ain't going to work. Might as well just do two at a time and go from there. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm putting the screws in through that plate and into the neck. And I'm trying to hold enough pressure on this neck to keep the shim from falling out. The thing about these screwed on necks like this is you, you want them really good and snug and tight, but you got to realize too that you could strip the threads on that wood and then you'd really have problems. So you want it snug and tight, but that's as far as you want to go with it. Well that looks really low right at the moment, I got to be honest. Low is good because that means it's achievable, but it might be too low. We may have to thin the shim a little bit. I'm just making sure these screws are really good and snug. They're real snug. Okay, so do I dare go further? It's it's looking real good if the action would be, I mean, if the fretboard's good and level. By the way, let me look at that. I should have looked at it while I had it off the guitar, but I didn't think about it. Well, right at the moment, it looks perfect. So, I mean, that's hard to see with this bridge in the way, but it looks pretty darn good. So the best I can see anyway. And the accent's going to be really crazy low at the moment, but I'm thinking it's going to go up higher. It's right about 60, and we don't have much tension on even those two strings yet. I have a feeling it's going to grow to just about what we want it to be, but that's a guess. I'm going to go ahead and string it up, and we'll just take our lumps. If it doesn't work, we'll have to unstring it and adjust the shim. I'm just going on my best guess. I think it's going to be pretty close. We'll bring you back here and show you what it looks like as soon as I get all the wires on this thing. Well, my friends, I think we've done pretty well with this thing. We had that 34,000 shim in here. That raised it up enough that the action was right around 60 thousandths. Well, that's a little bit low and it was buzzing very li a little bit right up through here. It was just you know, just on the edge, you know, but it was buzzing. So we just adjusted the uh, 
adjustable bridge back or saddle back here and we raised it up and now it's about 90 uh, at the 12th fret on the bass side and it goes down to about 65 or so on the treble side and that's really pretty darn good it plays pretty well I'm going to turn my attention back to this and see if we can't darken that up just a little bit more but I think we're just about finished with this thing otherwise I got a little home brew of uh, some shellac it's amber shellac some red dye, some yellow dye, and some brown dye. It seems to be a fairly close match to the color, but then again, I'm colorblind. I'm just trusting that uh, Bill standing here, he'll yell at me if it's just way yeah, too it's, wrong. It's getting darker. That's really not too bad, considering you had a hole there, you know. Yeah. It's solid, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Depends on what light I get in. If I get in from this light, that centerpiece is lighter. If I get over here, that centerpiece is darker. The shellac dries pretty fast, so you can you can kind of pick your darkness here by just putting it on and keep putting it on. And it might be getting a hair too dark now. I don't know. It's really hard to say. Like I said, you can't make those things disappear. They just don't disappear. But, you know, I've seen a lot worse scars on guitars, so it's not that bad. Well, I have checked and double-checked everything, and everything really checks out well. I think it's as solid as it was the day it came off their assembly line. Um, you know, we always wish for more when it comes to repairing things, but that's not a terrible repair considering how big that hole was and how bad it was busted on the inside. And uh, overall, it's pretty good. It's playable. The intonation actually checks really close. Uh, there's a couple of strings that are a little bit off, but overall, it's pretty close. So I'm going to let Bill play you a tune on this thing. So we'll let him take over. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I can't, I couldn't ask for a better result. So, yeah, I think it's solid now. I think that was the whole problem. That neck block was yeah. loose from the body, and uh, yeah, it just needed to be solided up. Mm -hmm. It seems to be 100% yeah. solid now. Oh, it's, it's I don't think it's going to go anywhere or do anything <laughs> that it yeah. shouldn't do. Yeah, it plays like a, plays like a dream. Well, this is Bill's fourth trip up here, so yeah. Bill, I'll let you just close this out. You got anything you want to say about anything? All I can say is if you got an instrument that you need work on, and, and uh, this is the place to bring it, and it's a beautiful place to stay while you're here, while he works on it, and he'll even let you stand in here and aggravate him while he does it. <laughs> I, I just can't say enough about Jerry and, and Sue's hospitality, and well, letting us you. come up here and stay and working on these instruments, and uh, it's just an awesome experience all the way around. And well, great. Uh, I would Thank highly you. encourage anybody, if you get a chance, even if you don't have an instrument, uh, to come up and stay and uh, have a good time. 
Thank you, Bill. Yeah, you can't go by what he just said because he's been here four times. Obviously, he's prejudiced. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. If uh, you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button down there and then give me that thumbs up. I would sure appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thumbs up.